say uh, thank you uh, for for everything. And uh, I know this is a, you know, a, a right before the, the holiday season starts and kicks off, you know, but I would say that we just kind of went through Thanksgiving, right? You know, as we think about Thanksgiving, there's, there's something that, you know, just always reminds me of how grateful that we are and how grateful I am and Mr. Nitty is for all of you. You know, and, and I, you know, I know that's been a couple of weeks ago, but it, uh, there's not a day that goes by that I don't come to work and I don't and I'm not thankful uh, for th this team and for the things that you do uh, for our Army. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. And as we move into the, the season of giving, uh, one of the things that we're going to, you know, think about is how do we give you the support that you all need? to continue to provide the support uh, to our force. So hopefully these town halls, uh, you know, and through our interactions uh, daily, you know, we can raise issues up and we can identify, address them and really uh, figure out how we can help you help the team. Uh, so that's that's my my gift to you all is a, a big ear uh, to listen to, you know, and then the opportunity to figure out uh, how we can, you know, help you help the team. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. Uh, and uh, looking forward to an open dialogue that's in there. Um, are you down? Oh, all right, sir. I'll just cover the agenda real quick. So uh, here's what we'll cover today. As always, we'll start off with some employee recognition. Um, just a couple updates on some programs that are out there. We'll provide an operational update, cover some upcoming events, and then, as always, we'll answer any questions that you have. Um, so if you can go to the next chart, we'll start off with the most valuable players um, for August. So starting off with Mr. Uh, Pascarella from ACLC. He was a principal advisor and key contributor to developing and executing a new IDIQ contract. It's a base uh, plus four years worth $37 million, really for training aircraft mechanics in manufacturing aircraft simulation maintenance trainers um, for our, our training base. Uh, he developed the documents and then he did it in a very uh, compressed timeline. So great job, Mr. Pascarella. Appreciate all that you, you do down at ACLC. Next, uh, Mr. Smith from ALC. Uh, he was a significant uh, contributor to the uh, data quality efforts um, using the Army uh, Vantage uh, platform. So he created um, enhanced air checks. Um, they really benefited um, the item managers and the weapon system teams using uh, making sure that they had uh, quality data and also um, supply availability views that helped them make it, uh, improved decisions. So um, great job, Mr. Smith. Uh, Ms. Dick, uh, Dickerson in the G1, um, she collaborated with all stakeholders really to ensure that award, awards packages were uh, correctly um, submitted and that there were reduced reworks on awards packages. And I could just tell you that um, there's been a big improvement in our uh, the timeliness of our awards. I mean, from my perspective, it used to be I would approve an award and then I might see the certificate two months later. Now it's within seven days. It's in, within in the box, ready to get back to the employees so we can improve um, the timeline of uh, give, giving proper recognition to our workforce. So great job, Ms. Dickerson. She was a part of that, but it was a lot of people in the G1 team that improved that process. Um, in the G3, Mr. Uh, Valerio, so he was instrumental in really preparing um, the facilities for the G3 um, shop to return back to work. So as we did the transition back to work, seems relatively easy come back, but um, really there was a lot of uh, to take care of as, if from you know IT and facilities uh, support. So he did all that, great job. Um, Mr. Valerio's uh, G6, uh, Mr. Latuka, um, really a, a developer for the SharePoint team. He, he took the lead on uh, multiple projects, but one of them was the leader investment uh, for tomorrow, the lift program. Uh, he did a lot of work uh, with SharePoint and some of the management systems uh, that they use to just uh, improve the effectiveness and the success of the program. So great job, Mr. Latuka. Um, in the G8, uh, Mr. Mike Garrett, 
Uh, he significantly contributed in uh, support to AMCOM acquisition processes. We've improved a lot of those processes. Mike was a big part of that, really um, to ensure the success of critical mission functions by setting best practices in the business rules um, so that our service requirements were tracked, reviewed, um, and approved properly, and then really the training associated with that to improve the process. So good job, Mr. Garrett. Um, at LEAD, um, Ms. Highland, so uh, significant contributions uh, so by support of data management and analytics, again, um, using data and using the tools and the analytical tools that are available. Um, she created a lot of reports to include the, the dormant stock reports and that improved performance at the depot. Um, she was also an integral part of the audit team that provided audit samples to the headquarters as part of our audit readiness program. So, so great job. And then lastly, for August, Mr. Bruce Klein, who's part of the SGS and our uh, protocol team. Um, August, if people didn't realize, was a very demanding month for the protocol team. And Bruce was uh, an integral part, uh, handling all facets of the protocol duties to include uh, General O'Connor's uh, promotion ceremony, the AMCOM change of command, as well as Major General Royer's retirement ceremony. A lot occurred in about a 48 hour window and, and Bruce was in charge of all of that. So great job to Bruce and great job to um, all the uh, most valuable players for August. <laughs> Along that line, I, I know we uh, we missed uh, September, so we're going to hit the, some of the September most valuable players that are in there. First and foremost, I'd like to recognize from ACLC, uh, Mr. Aragon, uh, for his exceptional work and disposition to perform above and beyond his duty description as the only optical instrument repairer uh, for the supported organizations. Uh, Mr. Aragon had the opportunity to uh, learn and troubleshoot and fix uh, two LRAS systems, bringing them back to fully mission-capable uh, and, and, and solving all the thermal imaging problems uh, that in those systems that are in there. So his actions significantly increased uh, the ability for the officer basic cost, uh, course at uh, first or 130th FA to produce the students uh, and educate and train them on the, the systems in there. So great job from Mr. Ergon. Uh, Mr. Kramer from uh, ALC uh, was instrumental part of a team and, and responsible for creating the predictive parts warning system now in use uh, for both Corpus Christi and Letter Kenny. Uh, this uh, helps us identify parts that are line stoppers uh, and then have reduced uh, the total number of line stoppers by 5%. Uh, so no doubt this is increasing the effectiveness of our depots across uh, across the board and uh, decreasing costs. So great job to Mr. Kramer. From a G3, uh, Mr. Thompson, while receiving aircraft component historical records in preparation for the release of the new uh, AMCOMS uh, safety message, Mr. Thompson, you know, went through numerous historical records to ensure that errors on the UH-60 Blackhawk tail rotor blades, uh, which could compromise the safety and integrity of the system uh, and of the of the message itself, uh, was permanently sh shortened and stored the useful life of the of the main of the main rotor blades. Uh, he took the initiative uh, to do a complete historical data review of over uh, 12,000 tail rotor blades spanning uh, four different part numbers and updated the incomplete or inaccurate data, you know, to ensure that each blade met the aviation requirements. So great job saving more than 134 months of flyable hours uh, for our, our, our blades in service. Uh, Ms. Long out of uh, G4 obtained the level three OPSEC in instructor certification. This certification is uh, instrumental and provides us the in-house capability uh, to train level two OPSEC courses, uh, which ensures flexibility and saves costs over time. So great job. Uh, from Ms. Long. Ms. Sims from the G6 is uh, commended for outstanding performance while exhibiting expertise in IT software uh, management. Her ability to utilize problem solving skills and strategic planning uh, really enabled the success of the support for the entire command. Uh, and she's doing a great job, you know, identifying data trends, patterns, and analyzing specific failure modes uh, to ensure that we've got accurate data and our IT systems are working effectively. From uh, the G8, Ms. Avery made significant contributions in support of uh, AMCOM's audit readiness mission. Uh, her outstanding leadership and, su and superior technical ability uh, enabled us uh, to understand the accounting requirements and ensure that uh, we met our uh, Army audit requirements. So well done, 
and uh, great great job at helping us uh, prepare for the uh, auditability requirements. Uh, Ms. Mr. Powell uh, from safety stepped in to lead a comprehensive reporting effort uh, for the safety office and is responsible for time sensitive, highly visible efforts uh, requiring attention to detail to, for us to be more accurate and effective and ensuring that uh, we are in compliance with reporting all our information and data during a time you know, of, of significant need and from the safety office. So well done uh, by Mr. Powell. Uh, Mr. Branch from SAMD worked tirelessly to manage and track and capture all incoming uh, NASAM's requirements uh, while SAMD was acting as an interim program manager and, and program integrator for the non-standard NASAM's uh, a air defense uh, critical program. Obviously a uh, great help uh, to support our UK Ukraine partners, you know, no doubt about it, to having a strategic impact. So well, well done by Mr. Branch. And then uh, uh, finally from uh, USADA, uh, Mr. McBarnes made significant contributions in support of the Army's uh, calibration and repair support activity and mission to ensure that uh, TMD support at uh, Fort Wainwright uh, was, was done correctly uh, by assuming the roles of the T TSC site chief and was instrumental in the continued success of the calibration and repair mission uh, for the region, certainly enabling the units to maintain a higher le level of readiness. So we appreciate the, the preciseness and the in increased uh, TMD availability based off of his leadership. So I wanna say thank you to Mr. Moss. All right, if you can go to the next chart, so we'll cover uh, length of service awards for both October um, and for um, October and for November. So you see there are 22 folks here um, for 30 years of service, 35 years of service, and 40 years of service um, from across multiple organizations. My gift to you for uh, Christmas is I'm not going to have you suffer through while I struggle through all these names and butcher everybody's names. Um, but I don't want to, um, you know, degrade from the, the fact of the, the years of service that these folks have contributed um, to the, the United States and to the government. So if you go to the next chart um, and show November here. So 22 on the first chart, um, 24 on this chart, 46. Um, employees with 30 years of service or greater um, for the months of uh, October and November. And if you add it up, and I do the math all the time because it always amazes me, almost 1,600 years of service, 1,585 years of service between these 46 individuals. So just phenomenal, the level of uh, experience and the level of ded dedication um, that our workforce has and you know the CG talked about how how great um, you know the organization and AMCOM performs and a lot of it has to do with the expertise and the dedication of people just like these 46 that we're recognizing today so a round of applause for all of these folks. transition to uh, recognizing Ms. Reese, um, I, I just want to highlight that, you know, it is really amazing uh, the quality of people that we have that are dedicated uh, to our nation and to this organization. You know, you look at, you know, 1600 years of service, you know, you think about the impact that they've had, you know, every day coming to work, you know, figuring out how to make a difference in the lives of the people to the right and left and to the lives of our, you know, the organizations that we support. You know, and I just want to say, you know, again, I'm, I'm amazed, uh, you know, but the quality of the people, their dedication uh, to our nation and the continuous impact they have uh, across the team. So I just want to highlight another round of applause for those uh, that have. <laughs> All right. Is Kara here? here? Yeah, she is. Come on up here. All right. Okay, so, you know, we just uh, recognize MVPs. We recognize people for, you know, their service. 
you know, and, uh, and again, this is really uh, one of the you know, best things that we get to do is just thank each other for the contributions and the impact they've had. And here I'd like to make a, you know, a special recognition, you know, of, of Kara Reese and uh, what she do has done for this entire team. You know, there's no doubt about it. Uh, every single day she comes to work, you know, and she's looking out for each and every one of you. You know, she's the eyes and ears of the command to ensure that uh, all of you, you know, have the opportunities and uh, that you need to be successful, you know, at, uh, at your profession and it, with uh, the way of life that you've chosen to contribute uh, to our great team. So she keeps uh, me straight. She keeps our team straight, you know, and, and uh, you know, she is just a tremendous person, uh, you know, individually, and she's an, an incredible employee that we'd like to recognize. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, recognize her with the award. Attention to orders. The following individual is awarded the Meritorious Civilian so Service much. Medal, Miss Kara A. Reese, in recognition of her exceptional service as Director, Equal, Oppor Equal Employment Opportunity, U.S. Army Aviation and Missile Command from October 2019 to September 2020. Ms. Reese superbly managed all aspects of the Equal Employment Opportunity Program, driving positive and lasting change in the command's organizational climate. Ms. Reese's outstanding achievements, dedication, and exemplary performance are in keeping with the highest traditions of government service and reflect great credit upon herself, the U.S. Army Materiel Command, and the Department of the Army. Signed, Edward M. Daly, General Commanding. Can we give you a speech? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. I haven't been recognized like this since I started government service. So thank you so much. It means a lot. I was wondering, Karen, you were trying to run away there for a second. All right. If we go to the next chart, just hit a couple of things. So the DOX, um, the Defense Organizational Climate Survey is still active. It'll, it's uh, available until the 31st of December. Uh, everybody should have got a, uh, a email message with the link in it, but we're please encourage everybody to, to fill out the DOX. It's one of the ways that you have a voice to um, provide your feedback and your thoughts uh, specific to AMCOM as a command. Um, it takes about 20 minutes. I've done mine. You could probably do it in seriously 15 to 20 minutes. There's a lot of, um, you know, radial buttons where you just pick uh, on a scale of what your thoughts are, but there are also some places where you could enter um, comments on what your thoughts are. So please, again, encourage everybody to, to provide feedback for that. Um, next chart, um, just if you're like me and the, the thrift savings plan, if you contribute to the thrift savings plan, um, I always forget every year that you got to renew that. Um, if you go to the next chart, please. So um, if you're making automatic contributions to your thrift savings plan, you have until this Saturday, the, the uh, 17th of December, to go on to government retirements and benefits platform do it online. It just takes a few minutes to renew that contribution so that it takes effect the first pay period of January. If you miss that uh, 17 December date, um, that deduction will not happen in the first pay period. and You'll have to play catch up throughout the year. The IRS did increase um, for 23 the amount that you can contribute. So if you're under the age of 50 this year, you can contribute up to 22,500 to your TSP. And then if you're over the age of 50, you can contribute up to 30,000. So just a reminder for everybody. Next slide, please. <coughs> hey, just uh, just a couple of quick things I'd like to highlight. Uh, I know the, the last uh, couple of months have been, you know, pretty fast and furious and with uh, a lot of things that are ongoing, you know, continuing support uh, to the warfighter, you know, obviously uh, support to uh, Ukraine. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. You know, and then uh, implementing all the, the great initiatives that uh, the, the team has, you know, adopted over the last uh, few years. And you all do it so well, right? So, um, again, this is uh, one of the best things that we can do is to have this town hall where 
one, we recognize the great people, and then two, communicate you know some of the you know, the broader issues, and just say thanks uh, for all your hard work. Uh, Amcom 101, you know, we did it. You know, obviously, uh, you know, in conjunction with uh, Cribbins, you know, it uh, it really enabled us uh, to to kind of get a broader audience uh, together. But I just want to say thank you to the G3 teams uh, and the protocol team in particular uh, for coordinating and, and working through uh, the, the challenges of synchronizing uh, both of those uh, activities, you know, in that same week. Uh, it really was a great opportunity for uh, units from the field to send individuals here, you know, to kind of understand what AMCOM does and how AMCOM can support you know them and uh, really uh, help them see themselves and in, in figuring out how they can improve their own readiness because uh, there's lots of readiness challenges that are that the field is facing you know and uh, we're trying to figure out how we can help them help themselves or help them help us help them uh, you know and that was a great opportunity uh, for us to do that so I just want to say a special thanks to you know all the investment and in time effort and energy you know from the team uh, to coordinate and do all do all that and do it as professionally as you did. Well, the second thing I like to highlight is not just Cribbins, but also Luther Jones. You know, I had the opportunity, obviously, uh, to, to head down to CCAD and, you know, and, and really uh, just see the tremendous support from across the community uh, that our depots, you know, uh, get, uh, but also see the, the tremendous, uh, you know, output uh, and the systems you know, processes and production that occurs at our depots. And that's really enabled by the entire team. You know, I had the opportunity to go up to Letterkenny as well, you know, earlier, you know, a couple of months ago. And, you know, our depots are incredible, you know, and they are enabled by each and every one of you, you know, here. And, and uh, they're really a national treasure. You know, I call them the, the national insurance policy, you know, for our systems. And what you do is you enable them, you know, to be that. As we think through, you know, uh, surging to get Patriot missile systems ready to, to ship to different countries, you know, it's our depot teams are going to be the backstop, stop, you know, in terms of maintenance support and maintenance capacity to, to do that. Repairing HIMARS, you know, or getting aircraft, you know, uh, production rates, you know, increased uh, with our Victor models in particular. Our depots uh, offer a tremendous amount of capacity capability, you know, and insurance, you know, for, for the nation. You know, and uh, and it was great to have the opportunity, you know, to head down to CCAD and to Letterkenny, but uh, to just to be part of uh, the the Luther Jones uh, discussion. Um, AMCOM campaign plan. I, you know, I just want to you know highlight today, really kind of invested in the people, you know, investing in you all and recognizing you know you all for what you do uh, every single day. And if uh, you know my I, my my challenge is, you know, working through the recognition policies, processes, you know, let's recognize our people and thank thank them for what they do. Education policies, you know, with uh, high velocity training efforts, you know, and then really onboarding uh, new personnel. You know, I'm really pleased to see the team and the team's efforts of uh, really trying to, you know, help develop, educate, and enable your success, uh, you know, across the entire team that's in there. So looking forward to more opportunities to do those things you know, uh, through, the, through the campaign method. Uh, we're going to have a war game here, you know, in January, uh, maybe move to February uh, for our, our OIB modernization efforts across uh, AMC, you know, and that's uh, really going to help generate uh, what the investment strategy is, you know, going forward. Uh, you'll see Congress has just authorized an increase in, in funding uh, for uh, OIB modernization. Where that falls in between CCAD, Letterkenny, and the rest of the organic industrial base, you know, it will have a tremendous impact as we continue to refine and build the, the you know, the modernization uh, for our organic industrial bases to provide the capacity and capability, you know, for the broader team. As we think about, you know, onboarding uh, new pieces of equipment, you know, that's going to have a, an impact on our ability uh, to maintain the supply availability, uh, but also to repair and, and uh, and, and maintain those systems uh, over the time, as well as maintaining our current systems uh, that we have. So I'm looking forward to the continuous uh, improvements with our modernization efforts and the continued investment you know, from our nation to ensure that we have that capacity and capability uh, for the future. I talked a little bit about uh, you know, support to the UK in defense, and you know, I would just say I really appreciate uh, you know, the, the unsung heroes that are working through uh, you know, long hours, uh, you know, and ensuring that uh, we can meet those requirements uh, to support our, our national objectives, right? You know, 
you know, our national objectives have been clear, you know, and we get uh, presidential directives every week, you know, and uh, usually uh, every Monday morning at 06, uh, we're already ready to respond to, you know, and support uh, our, na our nation's uh, political objectives and our presidential directives that we get every week. And it's not lost on me, you know, the hard work it takes to get that done. You know, when you th start thinking about missile systems that we haven't used since 1993, you know, getting those things out from storage, you know, uh, qualify them, understanding the safety, operational risk, you know, uh, and creating, you know, uh, ways to employ them out of, you know, stuff that's been divested for years. You know, it's a, it's a Herculean effort uh, that, I know it's ongoing every single day uh, to ensure that we have the repair parts availability to support, you know, the, the consumption requirements and to ensure that we've got the, you know, the, the right uh, quantity of, of missiles, you know, and systems, you know, that uh, we manage and maintain, you know, delivered uh, to the point of need you know, at the time of need has really been inspirational to watch. And I just want to say a lot of that is going on, you know, below the radar. And I just want to say thank you all for what you do. Uh, to make it make it happen, uh, make it happen uh, so seamlessly across across the board. You know the the reality is is uh, the support to Ukraine is going to continue, right until our na our national policy hasn't changed. You know, and then you know just uh, from an unclassified standpoint, you can say that uh, you know we are making a tremendous difference. You know, in the in the fight uh, for freedom. You know, by people uh, that don't want to be oppressed you know, and want to have the right to, to choose their own way of life, you know, and there's no doubt in my mind uh, that, you know, if it didn't stop in Ukraine, you know, it would continue to spill over to other parts of the world where, you know, where we would have, you know, a significant challenge uh, to, you know, to, uh, or significant amount of uh, casualties uh, and, you know, um, challenges to, to ensure that we can maintain our current world order uh, as peacefully as we have been for the last, uh, you know, 80 plus years. So I just want to say thank you for all you do uh, to make that happen. You're making a huge difference uh, and we are making a huge difference uh, for the Ukrainians as they continue to fight for their way of life. All right, next. All right, so some upcoming events. I know uh, the holidays are coming up, a little bit more of a relaxed schedule coming <clears throat> but then the new year you know it starts kicks off hot and heavy so um, on the 12th of January first of all we'll have a uh, Army Materiel Command uh, change of responsibility between Command Sergeant Major Delgado who's outgoing and then Command Sergeant Major Jimmy Sellers uh, will come in and become the new uh, AMC Command Sergeant Major. He's currently up at DAG-4 as a Sergeant Major in the DAG-4, so he'll be coming to the team. That same day, currently scheduled, uh, but likely will uh, be rescheduled, uh, Miss Wicker, the a AMC EDCG, will be coming to AMCOM. That'll be uh, a full-day event. So uh, we'll start out in the morning and, and talk to her about some of our uh, supply chain and depot maintenance is a kind of a small group and then she really wants the opportunity to do some some professional development meet with some of the junior employees and just have a, a session with them question and answer um, we'll have a working lunch with some of the the senior directors with Miss Wicker and then we'll close the day out um, talking to her about some of the initiatives and some of the key programs that we're working here um, inside of AMCOM. So an opportunity to really highlight to her some of the great work that, that you're doing. Um, <clears throat> the Aviation Senior Leader Forum will take place down at Fort Rucker the 23rd and the 25th. And also that same time frame here in Huntsville, we'll have the OIB Modernization War Games. So uh, General O'Connor talked about um, OIB modernization. Team's been working it a while. This is an opportunity for us to again <clears throat> go through um, all of our facilities projects and make sure that all our timelines um, for projects are, are married with both funding and requirements. So it's it's that'll be a two-day event. Um, the 9th through the 11th of February, we'll participate once again. This is the third year in a row. We'll participate in the, the BAYA Conference, Black Engineer of the Year Award Conference. 
It's a great uh, recruiting opportunity for us. We've had great success attending and participating in that conference. And then the end of February, we got two summits, the Military Aviation and Air Dominance Summits, as well as the uh, AUSA Hot Topics, which will take place the end of February. So that's the some of the key events coming up uh, the beginning of the calendar year. And with that, sir, I think we're ready for question and answers. Yeah, only uh, one thing to highlight. Uh, this occurred uh, last week, but uh, for those that don't know, uh, Lieutenant General Mohan uh, just took over as the, the DCG for AMC. And, you know, he's, uh, he's a tremendous uh, leader who comes with a tremendous amount of experience. Uh, but uh, we're blessed to have him on board and uh, we're looking forward to, you know, he, he understands, uh, you know, the operational requirements. He's been at AMC before, you know, and uh, he'll be a tremendous uh, asset for uh, AMC yeah, moving forward. But Okay. All right. We'll open it up to uh, any questions. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Out here, the, uh, would you believe there are no questions on telework online? Don't I believe, do not believe there's it. There's definitely questions online. <laughs> It's uh, Christmas, not April Fools. But to start out, sir, uh, the, the Army just announced a down select in the award for the Flora contract. Yep. And the question becomes, what does that mean really for AMCOM? And what does that mean for CCAD and the future of CCAD, sir? Yeah, no, really, really good question, right? So, um, you know, so the Army obviously just announced, uh, you know, the award winner uh, being the, for Flora, you know, being the Valor 280. You know, so as, uh, the, as the Valor 280 becomes, uh, you know, the the aircraft that will replace some, not all, uh, some of the UH-60s in the fleet. Uh, there's a couple of steps that we've got to take, you know, through the development of the, the aircraft and the continued transition from prototype, you know, uh, through production, uh, we will continue to update, validate, uh, and ensure we have a good life cycle sustainment plan, you know, for that aircraft and understand, you know, what those requirements are and, and continue to shape the uh, you know, the, the understanding of what was in the requirements document, now what is coming to fruition uh, for real. And then once we think through the, you know, the, the depot source of, uh, of repair, you know, and what capabilities do we need to modernize and put at CCAD, you know, and then how do we ensure that we've got the ability and, and the uh, uh, capability, I'm sorry, the capability and the uh, ability to maintain those, that aircraft in the system. That's part of that OIB modernization uh, effort that's in there. So there's a lot of work to do, right? You know, so just because the announcement was made, there's a lot of work to do to de determine what those requirements are, and we'll continue to upgrade, you know, modernize, and ensure that we're in position to support uh, that aircraft as it comes into the field. Okay, sir. The next uh, next question deals with the supply chain optimization efforts, and with that transition in the supply chain optimization. Um, is there a path forward for employees who would like to continue their direct support role to the warfighter, i.e. in the PMs? Is there a way that they can pursue that moving forward by the focus on LMP and supply metrics? Sure. Yeah, I think ultimately, you know, there's no change to the support, right? It's just changing how we support, um, you know, and how we how we manage the supply chain. Uh, Mr. Yeah, uh, so um, you know, a, a survey was put out and, and a lot of data was uh, a survey to each individual employee was sent out that uh, got their feedback. There was a lot of data that was taken into consideration um, to determine initially what people will go into what billets. So that's there was there was a methodology to figure that out. That, that's the starting point though. The, the, the goal ultimately is to give everybody opportunities to experience all of the different jobs to uh, build the experience and the breadth of the workforce. So um, I don't know the specifics on who asked the question, what job they're in or what they're going to, um, but, the op but the opportunity to do multiple jobs and as well as to continue or return to a previous job it is there. Yeah, and then just, again, we're still gonna support 
you know, the PMs, we're going to support all the customers. It's just how we're doing it is just changed a little bit. Thank you, sir. Um, there's a few questions along the same line, but any idea on the SharePoint and when we're going to get away from read only? We just happen to have the expert on that here yeah. in the room. Hold on, Bruce is bringing you a microphone so everybody could hear. I'm glad you didn't throw it, Bruce. Hey, Shirley Perky, G6, and I know everybody is being very patient as we, as we stay read only in the AEP. Unfortunately, across the board, there are a lot of issues that took place when the migration from traditional DISA hosting over to Microsoft Azure Cloud environment. There have been some technical problems. Uh, they got their heads down coloring as to how to fix some of those. A lot of it is dealing with Microsoft. A lot of it is dealing with a company called Nintex on workflows. And I personally am asking, we need timelines. We need to know when are these problems going to be fixed, okay? And this is affecting all of AMC and the depots. We chose to stay in read only simply because uh, actively trying to work on, trying to execute workflows and things behind the AEP that aren't working correctly uh, exacerbates the problems that we're already having okay and there are several places that wish they would have stayed in read only so um working to get more timelines um i'll work with the chief to make sure that you know we're in sync as to our understanding and uh that's what we know so far okay so we got amc totally engaged on we got issues Give us some help here. Thanks. Uh, sir, along the same lines of uh, on the technology issue is there's some employees that are concerned they don't have the computers or they need an upgrade. Um, is there any way ahead for, you know, the purchase of computers or can we do it at a smaller scale? I guess is really the question to support their their efforts at their desk. I, say, say the question again. Who, I guess, better question, who should they talk to? to? Yeah, so it depends on where the employee is, to, uh, you know, dictates who they talk to. But generally, that, that's come up numerous times here in the last month about availability of computers or the time that it takes to get new employees um, computers or computer upgrades. So I will get with the G6, we'll lay down whatever the, 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 the plan is or the status, and then we'll post something back out on, on the uh, question and answer board. Thank you, sir. Um, is there any word on the repeal of the vaccination mandate moving forward as we see the, especially as we see the NDAA moving through Congress? So, so there has not been any official word on any repeal uh, for the vaccine mandate. Um, Sir, understood. Um, now. And, and I don't know sir. what the timeline would be for, you know, that to be resolved. Um, Matt, do you have anything you want to add on that? We're still waiting on the passage of the National Defense Authorization Act. There is language in there. It only applies to the military. Uh, this time, I would expect that yeah. yeah, just to repeat on the microphone for, for the outstations. Uh, bottom line, we're still waiting for the NDA to pass. Once it passes, we'll have an opportunity to kind of think through and figure out how do we implement that law and the uh, the uh, applicability of it uh, to uh, both military members and civilian members. So. All right, thank you, sir. All right, uh, now on to telework. The, <laughs> uh, anyway, w would you mind addressing some of the disparity between the 
uh, telework agreements that are in existence throughout the command and what is the way forward on telework and specifically how do we make it more equitable across the organization? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, we're still, we only issued guidance, right? You know, and the guidance was to help, you know, leaders at Echelon, you know, fix or reduce the disparity between, you know, the, the, the different uh, directorates. You know, so that, that was the, that's the reason why I actually issued the guidance. Uh, we're still in arbitration uh, with the union until we can come to, you know, an agreement or resolution moving forward. You know, the guidance is, hey, you know, follow this guidance to help or reduce the inequity across the teams, uh, you know, across, uh, you know, the, the directorates. Yeah. No, and there was a similar question that the union had uh, submitted on why is there inconsistency across the command with, within organizations on telework. So ultimately, when we laid out the guidance and the, the CG put out his guidance, you know, the first step was identify is the job eligible for telework. So depending on you know what job you do you may or may not be eligible for telework if it is eligible for telework it's up to the supervisor to determine um the, the telework schedule based on mission requirements and the cg put out there's some left and right limits um it did allow um you know telework for the employees within within a within a band um so you know, some of that inconsistency depends on what job you're in. It depends on what your mission requirements are at the time. Um, <clears throat> but to the best of our ability, um, until we can, you know, finalize the policy, um, the CG put out guidance to help um, reduce some of that inconsistency. Yeah. But I don't think we'll ever get to a, a cookie cutter for every single employee. This is what it is. Uh, because the, it's just uh, the op the operation is so large, the mission is so complex that we'll never get to that. Everybody's on the exact same uh, amount. Yeah, you know, and just to uh, <coughs> follow up, you know, the comparison other, you know, that, that that's where the risk is in the comparison other uh, because not everything is similar, right? So if you think through situational leadership and you know, uh, allowing the leaders at Echelon to make the decisions to have that determination of whether or not the, the that position is eligible, you know, for telework uh, and or the mission allows telework, you know, that that comparison other may or may not, you know, work as you start looking across uh, other other staff sections or other directorates. Um, so, I, yeah, I agree with uh, Mr. Nitty that we, we're never going to get to a place where it's one cookie cutter solution for everybody. And just one other thing on telework guidance, because there has been some confusion out there, I just want to clarify. So supervisors have the ability to approve 100% um, telework for up to four weeks for medical purposes, right? So there's some flexibility there. If there are situations, you know, a supervisor can say, yes, you meet the condition up to four pay periods. Um, but beyond that, 100% telework or remote work must be approved at the DCG level. Okay. Um, sir, is there any change to the, the current COVID uh, status or the, or the policies in, in accordance with COVID on the installation? And really the question being for notifying employees of uh, fellow employees that have fallen sick or anything else? I don't know. There is uh, no change to uh, any of the COVID policies. And that, and that was kind of in line with another one that came from the unit as far as um, practices of informing employees when someone else tests positive for COVID in their directorate. I think it's probably along those same lines. So, you know, there has been no change um, bottom line is we keep uh, personal um, information private, so we're not going to say Mr. or Mrs. whoever. Um, if we know somebody is positive, we will notify people that were in the workplace that somebody in that area was um, positive. Uh, we do not quarantine work areas. Um, we're not cleaning uh, or sanitizing, I should say. Um, work areas. So just because somebody came into the office um, and they, you know, tested positive, we'll notify the work 
force that this person, um, an individual, not specific person, was positive in the work area for there. We're not going to cordon off the, the office or bring in, you know, a, a crew to sanitize it. OK, sir, uh, I think in the interest of time, the last question really on here uh, for you is uh, for remote work request documents that have been put out. Is there a limit to the number of approvals that there will be for the organization? A limit to the number of you mean total approvals for the that's right. No, sir. so every every case will be taken on a case by case basis based on the merit of that case. There's no limit on what how many will or will not be approved. So everyone that comes up will be taken at face value based on that individual's circumstances um, and a decision will be made based on that. Yeah, no cookie cutter solutions and no no quotas. <clears throat> Just an uh, individual case based off the merits of the case. Perfect. All right. Well, you know, last couple of times I, you know, shared a little bantering with uh, Sergeant Major about the, you know, my New York football giants and his Cowboys. Well, that hasn't worked out very well for me. Um, so, I, you know, he's not here today, but, you know, I'll just say the Cowboys have a really good team. You know, we'll see what happens in the playoffs. Uh, but my Giants, uh, they got a lot of work to do. So, um, but in, in all seriousness, uh, this is a you know this is a great workforce, and it's a great workforce because of all of you. And I just want to say it's an honor to serve with each and every one of you. I'm very thankful for you, and uh, I hope you have a great holiday season. You know, have an opportunity to spend time with uh, family, friends, and really uh, you know just uh, reflect on you know, just how much of a difference you make, uh, you know, in this world and in this organization and to the soldiers and people that are counting on you. Uh, so I want to say thank you and thank you. Thank you, uh, you know, for what you do and just enjoy, enjoy your holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.